so we will be going for an introduction about a paper mca 302 302 theory of computation and compilers when you go through the syllabus you will find that the first two modules they deal with theory of computation and the next three modules they deal with compilers so what we will start off with is theory of computation now before we go into details about theory of computation let me just give you an introduction about what is theory of computation now hearing the word uh, you might be a bit uh, anxious and you know a bit tense like you know a new word something which we haven't heard and all that but things are very simple once you get the grasp of the subject the subject is going to be very very simple let's see what is meant by theory of computation now theory of computation is actually a branch of computer science it is a branch of computer science which tells you how were things done okay you might have heard about something called algorithms now why do we have algorithms we have algorithms to solve problems now theory of computation it is concerned of how can problems be solved using algorithms and not only that how efficiently can you be solving a problem now computer science is actually a branch of uh, you know which has all these mathematics and science coming in and there have been a lot of problems which have been solved during the past many years now theory of computation focuses upon how all these problems were solved okay so theory of computation deals not only with how problems can be solved and how efficiently it can be solved it even talks about how computer scientists were solving problems till date you might be wondering why you should be learning theory of computation now the theory of computation now onwards i will be talking about theory of computation like toc okay toc it forms the basis of writing good algorithms efficient time saving less complex algorithms which can run in your machines it even helps in you know uh, programming language research their development and the most important thing is you might have heard about compilers a very simple uh, when you have learned java you did have learn about something called a java compiler a java c now it is the theory of computation which is the backbone for construction of compilers now this theory of computation uh, you might be surprised why you need to learn theory of computation now uh, being computer application students you might be more focused upon writing code you write a program you have a question you need to solve it you write code and then you compile a code using your compiler you will get errors you will correct your errors okay and then it is a recursive process you go doing it on and on until you get the correct answer now what theory of computation aims at is not all problems can be solved there are several several problems in the real world which cannot be solved okay even if you use computers there are problems which cannot be solved now this theory of computation helps you to find out the computation capabilities and limitations of computers theory of computation it mainly has three branches they are automata theory computability theory and complexity theory we will be seeing each one in detail later okay so please have it down the branches of theory of computation the key considerations of any problem is you have to have a clear bifurcation of what can be computed or solved 
and what cannot be solved. So these are the main things which needs to be discussed in theory of computation. If you have a problem, can it be solved or will it remain unsolvable? Can the problem be a solvable problem or an unsolvable problem? Now, in case the problem is a solvable problem, you should be able to mathematically evaluate the speed in which the computations happen. Very simple, like you know, if you have A is equal to 10, B is equal to 20, and you need to find out C is equal to A plus B. Very simple, we know it is a solvable problem. We know it is a solvable problem. And we should be even able to know if you're given it as a program to the computer, within how much time will the problem be solved? Not only the time, how much memory will your machine need? Okay, so whenever you get the problem, the theory of computation will help you to classify it either into a solvable or into a non-solvable. Very simple, if you uh, try to do a division by zero, division by zero, it is undefined. So I say it is an unsolvable problem. You cannot find a solution for the problem, division by zero. It cannot be computed. That's it, give it over there. But you know, when you're told to add something, I can say it falls into the category called solvable problem. And then I should be able to mathematically compute how much speed does it take and how much memory of my machine is utilized. Let us do a very simple question, okay? So please have it down. The first question, I will dictate the question for you. Design a machine which can accept all binary strings ending in zero. Design a machine that accepts all binary strings ending in zero. So let's say I'm opening up a Word document over here. Okay, so now I have to, let's say I have a few binary. Now, the question is, design a machine that accepts all binary strings in zero. Okay, so now the first string which I wrote over here, that I say is a valid string, okay? The second one, which I wrote over here, according to my question, I say it is invalid. And the third one, which I wrote over here, that also happens to be invalid. So this is how the input of the machine goes, okay? You will be entering some binary values and you have to check whether it is valid or not and the question is can you design such a machine can you design such a machine which will take care of finding out whether a particular string is valid or not okay so let's come back to the question is it possible to design a machine which can accept all binary strings ending in zero? The answer is yes, you can design such a machine. So I would say this is a solvable problem. This is a solvable problem, okay? Now let's go to the second example. Design a machine which can accept all your Java code, okay? All of you are very familiar with Java, you know that when you write any Java code, it will be converted to its binary equivalent. You have the byte code, the validity is checked, okay? Can you design a machine which can accept all your Java code? Like, you know, you simply give public static void main string arguments, each and every word should be able to, uh, your compiler should be able to get it. 
find out whether those words are correct, the syntax is correct, the semantics is correct, and whether the flow is perfect. Is it possible to design such a machine which can accept your Java code, check for its correctness, and then give you a result? Okay, as you all know, yes, you do have such a machine. You do have such a machine called your Java compiler, the Java C. Okay, now these compilers, they are a product of theory of computation. Your compilers, they, their design, the design of compilers, they come from theory of computation. So I would say even this is a solvable problem. Designing a machine which can accept all your valid Java code or all your valid uh, C code or all your Android coding, all those, it is a solvable problem. There are machines which can accept it, find the correctness, and then give you a result. Now let's go to my third example. Okay, same as before. You should be able to accept all your valid Java code and never goes into an infinite loop. Okay, your machine, it should never go into the infinite loop. So we'll see part one by one. Okay, accepting the Java code, yes. You write the program, you convert it into your byte code, you can check the validity with your Java C. Yeah, fine. My second part, it should never go into an infinite loop. Now, there have never been machines which have been designed so that the machine never goes into an infinite loop. Okay, if your code is wrong or you have some problems in the code, it is for sure that your machine will go into an infinite loop. You either will get no output or you will get some absurd wrong output. So, you know, this particular case, again, I say it is an unsolvable problem. The first part is solvable, but the second problem, the second part never goes into an infinite loop programs might always go into an infinite loop. So I again say this kind of a problem, it is an unsolvable problem. 